Many people aspire for leadership, whether in the Christian community or in the world. Being leaders, of course, is a great gift, is a great calling. And today, the first reading tells us, you know, if you aspire to serve the Lord, prepare yourselves for an ordeal. And that's the reason why many people, you know, when they start serving the Lord, those who have been renewed in their faith, and happily, like innocent lamb, uh, they join the church organizations and they get slaughtered. And then they leave the church, they become angry, they become resentful, and they say, you know, we give ourselves, we give our service, and this is what we get. So, how do we pass through this ordeal? First and foremost, we need to be clear of our motives in service. The truth is, many of us do not really search the motives in which we are called to serve. The apostles, they were arguing among themselves which of them was the greatest. Although we might be serving God, but have you ever searched your real motives? Is it really for the service of God, the service of the community? Or is it about your glory, your honour, your recognition, your own self-interest? And uh, the truth is, many of us, we dare not search deep into ourselves. That is why when Jesus told the disciples, He said, you know, the Son of Man will be delivered in the hands of men, they will put Him to death. They did not understand what He said and were afraid to ask Him. We are not ready to confront ourselves. What the world aspire are transferred into the religious world. So there is always a danger, there is always temptation, whether you are in a corporate world or whether you are in the religious world. No one is bad. Secondly, we have to be clear, therefore, that when we serve the Lord, Jesus makes it clear that those who served Him must make Himself last of all and servant of all. It is really a service. It is called for self-emptying. It calls for self-denial. If you continue to put yourself as the center of everything, then this is where we forget that we are called to be servants. And this is where it's important for us to purify our motives. We must be the last among all. A great leader, therefore, is always uh, at the service of others. He considers himself as a real servant. Secondly, those even who serve with genuine motives, they themselves also are not aware that they have to carry the cross. And Jesus, that's why he told the disciples, he will be put to death. And many of us, we are not fully conscious of this. So even when you serve with good motives, you will face opposition, there will be challenges, there will be people who will not be happy with you. And so definitely in any area of life, there will be disagreement, there will be misunderstanding. This is part of the human world. It cannot be avoided. It's inevitable. But it's how we handle all these so-called oppositions, um, this misunderstanding. It's again the question of servanthood. Uh, not all the opposition against us are necessarily bad, actually. Sometimes they are meant to bring out our own lack of purity of love and service. Of course, some are simply jealous, huh? some are envious. So how do we handle all this? So today, the scripture readings invite us to have the right attitude towards service. Firstly, it's important for us to remember that um, we are serving the Lord. It is the Lord that we serve. So our accountability is not even to the boss. Our accountability is not even to our workers or our fellow colleagues. Our Accountability is to God. That's why St. Paul tells us whatever we do, let us remember who we are serving. That is the Lord. Secondly, uh, when it comes to service, we need to be committed. Commitment to the Lord is very important. If you are committed to your work, 
you have committed to your project. If you are committed to what you are doing, it will not last because that is your ego. If you are more concerned about the work you are doing and not concerned with the Lord, you will fail because at the end of the day, you are serving yourself. But if you are committed to the Lord, you are clinging to the Lord, then all these things will be seen as for the service of God. And so when we keep our eyes on Jesus, that what are we doing? Is it really serving the Lord? Then your perspective is very different. Then you are able to change your views. You are able to be open to the ways God invites us to respond. So commitment is not to your work. Commitment is to the Lord. If you are committed to the Lord, you will be committed to your work. It's the other way around. You fall in love with Jesus. You love Jesus first. Then you will know how to do your work. If you are committed to the Lord, you will do the best of capacity. And thirdly, in serving the Lord, there will be challenges, trials. So what happened? Again, Ecclesiastes tells us, whatever happens to you, accept it. And in uncertainties of your humble state, be patient, since gold is tested in fire and chosen men in the furnace of humiliation. Ah, and they say, ah, yeah, God is testing me, eh? purifying me in love. So we all make mistakes. And so even among colleagues, yeah, we are all testing one another. We are all spiritual benefactors and benefactors to one another. Not every day we are in good mood, some day in bad mood. Some day we are grumpy, yeah. some day we are happier, some days uh, we are cheerful, some days uh, we are a bit down. And so this is part of purification. It's part of love, it's part of growing in the community. Fourthly, if you want to serve the Lord, then we are told you must therefore trust Him. Trust Him and He will uphold you. Follow a straight path and hope in you. Whoever trusts Him will not be disappointed. And precisely the response to this, some say, commit your life to the Lord, trust Him and He will act. Trusting Him is important. Sometimes in whatever we do, things might not appear to be along the way or going the way we want. doesn't matter. He will somehow show us the way. We need to be patient. God will unfold His plan to us. And so we need to have a strong faith, a firm faith. Huh? Don't get discouraged easily. Don't give up. Because if you are committed to the Lord, you will never give up. Because we know the Lord will somehow stand by us and He will show us the way. People who give up is because they give up on the Lord. That is why they give up. If you never give up on the Lord, you will never give up on yourself. You will never give up on others. So, this is where we are reminded once again, response to some so beautiful, commit your life to the Lord, trust Him, and He will act. Amen.